the bulls are leaving the China shop again. This summer, China frightened the herd when it devalued its currency, but confidence returned and the renminbi made back about half of its loss. A loss that anyway wasn't all that big to start with, at just 3%. Frankly, that's pretty much nothing compared with the usual emerging market currency devaluation. But today, the renminbi officially closed back below the low that it closed at in August, having given up all of the autumn bounce. Well, I should say, it is still a little bit better than the worst point reached intraday uh, during the summer. Now, optimism and pessimism about the currency is reflected in the behaviour of the offshore traded uh, renminbi, which isn't limited by the official onshore 2% daily band. The red line here shows the value of the domestically traded renminbi against the dollar. That's known as the CNY after its Bloomberg initials. And the offshore currency, the CNH, is here in blue. Now the gap between the two was very, very wide after the first devaluation back in the summer. You can see the size of that there. Uh, and that was uh, because traders were betting that it was the start of a generalised debasement of the currency. The fear was that China would attempt to weaken in order to ease the pressure on its exporters as its economy was slowing. Now that then hit industries worldwide which compete with Chinese companies as well as hurting foreign suppliers of everything from durable goods to iron ore, whose dollar-based products would now cost more in renminbi. The gap has now widened right back out again, having briefly narrowed to nothing, in fact, slightly uh, reversed there in the summer, in, sorry, in the autumn as uh, the fears calmed. That gap's now right back out again uh, where it was, or very close to where it was in August, because the data came out today showing capital outflows and falling imports and exports, again stoking fears that the renminbi is going to be allowed to keep on weakening. And the direction of the currency is particularly important to countries such as Brazil or Australia which sell commodities to China. Steelmakers are already complaining that China is trying to export its way out of trouble, dumping excess capacity abroad rather than shutting down unprofitable facilities at home. The more the currency weakens, louder China's competitors are likely to shout. From an investor perspective, a weaker renminbi particularly matters because it adds global deflationary pressure. But in the short term, a weaker renminbi is most obviously bad for commodity prices and so for emerging markets. On here, the uh, red line shows the gap between the onshore and the offshore renminbi against the dollar, and the blue line shows the relative performance of uh, emerging markets against developed markets. As the gap between the two uh, initially widened out and then started to narrow again uh, during the autumn, you can see that the uh, confidence then returned and emerging markets beat developed markets. People were happy again about China. But for the past two months, that gap's been widening out again. That's the red line. And as a result, emerging markets have been underperforming the developed markets. Emerging markets at the moment do look fairly cheap. Mining shares are back at levels that were last seen in August 2003 in, when priced in dollars. Whether they're a buy depends on all sorts of factors from Brazilian politics to mine closures and dividends. But chief among those is the performance of China and its currency. You're really taking a punt on what will happen to this red line here.